In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use Internet of Things. Internet of Things allows you to create a digital signage smart business and automate the interaction between your digital signage presentation and the physical world. In other words, you can, for example, turn on a light when a user clicks a part of the presentation or send events to the signage presentation in case of an emergency like a fire. Of course, the possibilities are endless. So it's our goal here to explain to you how to take advantage of Internet of Things with Media Signage so you can create something amazing for your business. So how does it all work? Through the Signage Studio, you'll configure any one of your regular signage players to act as a socket gateway. This means that your signage player, in addition to running a regular presentation, will also be able to communicate with your IoT hub it will be able to send events, post commands, as well as receive post commands from your IoT Hub. Now you can use any IoT Hub that supports post commands. This includes Vera, Arduino, Ninja Blocks, or many of the IoT devices out there that you can just purchase on the market. And your IoT Hub can connect to any smart thing. Plugs, switches, relays, cash registers, elevators, anything you want. Because your smart things will communicate with the hub, and in turn the hub will communicate with the signage player and as well if you wanted to for example touch the screen and turn on the light the same thing will happen the signage player will simply send an event to the IoT hub and the IoT hub will connect to any smart device so it's all pretty straightforward to set up it's really not that complicated so let's begin so for the purpose of this demonstration, we can use Verilight, which you can order on Amazon. What's great about this device is that it's easy to set up and it supports hundreds of other devices, smart automation devices that can connect to it and can communicate to it. And therefore it can communicate with the signage player. And also for demonstration purposes, we can use the wireless lighting control that uses Z-Wave technology. Again, the Z-Wave technology we'll use to communicate with the hub, so it's really transparent to our signage player. So we'll use this to control a 120 volt lamp to turn it on and off through the event system. Now the event system does require an enterprise account, so make sure you upgrade your account. And once you do, log into your enterprise account and make sure you enable the functionality right here so you can create a LAN server as well as send events. So again, you can view my checkboxes right here. So when you receive your Vera device, you just want to make sure you configure it to join your Ethernet or Wi-Fi network and pair any devices that you've purchased, such as the 120 volt relay that I showed you earlier. So I went ahead and did that already. So now let's go ahead and configure the Vera to be able to send and receive events. Now by default, Vera supports post commands. This means that our signage player can send post commands, such as events, to the Vera all we have to do is simply configure the device ID. So I'll show you that in just a second. But before that, let's go ahead and configure the Vera to be able to send events. This means that if you click a relay, for example, such as the one I showed you, if you click the actual button on the relay, it can actually send events to the signage player and change the presentation. For example, change the timeline. So that you actually do need to configure on the Vera. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll switch over to scenes. I'll go ahead and create a brand new scene. Click on add scene. And I'm going to select my device. This is the device that I showed you earlier, that white relay that controls 120 volts. So I'll select it. It's already been paired. And anytime the device is turned on and off, I want to send a command to the signage player. So I'll go ahead and select that. And I'll select on. So whenever a device is turned on, I want my timeline, for example, to change on the presentation. So I'll select that. Click on validate. Click on next step. Again, click on next step. And over here on step three, I'm going to select the code defined right here to be able to send a post command. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in this code right here. So this will essentially send a wget command, a post command, to the address of my signage player. Now I don't know what my address is, so let's go ahead and switch really quick to the signage player. So over here under signage studio, I'll go to stations, select my station. I'm going to go to LAN server. This is again the socket server. I'll go ahead and enable it on the signage player, the particular signage player that I've selected. Refresh to make sure that I get the right IP address. So it is indeed 182.168.1.81. And you can see we have port 9999. So I can confirm that this is the right address and the right port of my signage player. And also what we need to specify is the event name. So in this case, we're gonna basically call this event turn on light. So this will be the event that's gonna be sent to the signage player Anytime somebody physically 
presses that white device button. Go ahead and save the configuration. Let's go ahead and give it a name and click on finish. So at this point we're done. Now let's go ahead and switch back to the Signage Studio. So I switch back to my Signage Studio and I have my museum campaign selected. Once my campaign is selected, I'm going to go to events. So you can see that I've configured three separate events. We have the turn on light right over here. And any time that we receive this event, and this event will be sent to the signage player from the Vera, we'll switch on to timeline one. Also, we've configured two more events, event one and event two. Anytime the signage player receives these events, he will actually send a command to Vera using a post URL. Remember I told you that Vera by default also knows how to receive post commands. So we've specified the IP address of the Vera device as well as the port. And we have a specific command over here and you'll kind of have to look at the Vera manual to see what kind of commands and they support many different commands for many different devices. But again, we don't really care. We just do a post command. So it's really up to the manufacturer for whatever smart hub device that you've purchased. One thing that I'd like you to pay attention to is that again, we have the IP address of the Vera, the port of the Vera, but we also have the device ID, which is again, that relay device. So if I go back over here, you see we have device number three. To, and we have actually a value right here at the end so it's going to be value one which means turn on and also we have device again three right here to turn off and you can see right here we have a value of zero so anytime we send event one or event two to the signage player it in turn will receive those commands through the socket server that's on a signage player and we'll send them as post URL commands to Vera. So it acts as a gateway. The signage player acts as a gateway. So we'll go ahead and open up the Vera right here. And you can see if I go to my devices and I select my device, and if I go to its settings, you can see that it has an ID of three. So that's how I knew to actually put an ID of three in this URL that I showed you. Also one important thing of course is to switch to stations. Again, just make sure that LAN server is turned on we have the correct IP address and also make sure that our campaign is set up to my museum. So that's important. You want to make sure you're running the right campaign. Let's go ahead and save our configuration. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate both the curl command and physically pressing the button. So first let's go ahead and press the button. You can see that the light turned on and the presentation changed. Now from the command line Again, physically pressing the button, turns on the light and presentation changes, to goes to timeline one, and again from the command line, we turn off, and again with the button. So we can confirm that everything is working. And so as I demonstrated, the event system is very powerful because it allows you to send events and receive events since we have the signage player acting as a gateway powered by a socket server. Next, I'm just going to touch real quick on a couple more things that we do have separate video tutorials that cover those aspects of the Sunrise Studio, which include the collection as well as putting buttons inside the scene. So if I put over here my collection component, and double click the collection to load up its properties, go to items, I can put anything I want, such as scenes or resources. I'll just select a few resources, drag and drop, switch to general, and switch to kiosk. You can see that now I can add events. So just like before, I can add events right here. If I'm using the collection, I can listen to the same events. So when a visitor clicks on that white button, as I showed you, you can switch the timeline, but at the same time, you can also listen to the same event at the collection level and take action as well. So if you're using an event somewhere in the system, you can also listen to the same exact event string at other places such as a collection and act upon these events. Also, if we switch over here to the scene editor, I can switch over here to my resources, select an image or a Swift, for example, drag and drop that and switch to my definition, send events, enable the same event system and again, select event one. So essentially now if a visitor clicks with a mouse or his finger on a touch screen on this particular Swift, our system will automatically fire this event one. And just like before, 
the campaign will catch this event and will act upon it. So if, for example, we're posting an HTTP post to the Vera, the same thing will, will happen. The light will either turn on or turn off. So the event system, again, is very, very versatile. You can fire events at the level of buttons inside a scene. You can fire events outside using a curl command, or you can even fire the events that are coming from a Vera hub. So using the event system, you can essentially create a system where these events are coming from different places and you can change the presentation accordingly. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and thanks for watching.